Hello, hello, friends. I am so glad you are here for episode 84 of the Love Your People Well podcast. I know it is summertime and life is busy, and so I'm so thankful that you're taking this time to dive into our conversation today about hospitality. And by extension of that, friendship. I mean, we we not only want to be opening our home to kind of the general neighbor that God has given us, but we need to find time to invest in friendships. And so I am really excited about this conversation. We are going to take a look um, first at the question of why. (laughs) Why is it important that we do invest time, energy, money on hospitality, on friendship, on inviting people into our lives, into these precious little circles (laughs) that we have created. And then we'll take a look at 10 practical tips, practical ways that you can actually live this out, how you can find the time, the energy, the resources for hospitality, for connecting with people. So I know that this will be really helpful if you are listening to this in real time and it's still summer. (laughs) You've got probably a lot of family stuff planned, um, but generally our schedules are a little bit more flexible And this might be a really natural time to stretch those muscles around connecting with people and inviting people in. Uh, But of course, if you're listening to this in the future, it's never a bad time (laughs) to make room in your schedule, in your life for other people to invite them in, to include them. And uh, we're not only going to talk about why, we're going to talk about how. But let me just uh, remind you before we jump into the full episode We are um, right in the middle of the month of June, June 2022. We have a discount going right now for the whole month in the Love Your People Well Etsy shop. So just use the code SUMMERBREAK, all one word, SUMMERBREAK, to get 25% off any item in the Etsy shop. Um, It's all really really smaller items, practical tools. (laughs) There's prayer journals and gratitude journals and stress relief workbooks and and little things for the kids and, you know, lots of stuff, summer activity ideas. Um, Definitely check it out. Use that discount code summer break to get 25% off. Um, It's going to wrap up at the end of the month. So just wanted to highlight that and make sure you're aware. Um, You can always circle back if you're driving right now or your hands are sudsy because you're washing the dishes. You can always circle back, but not forever (laughs) and just until the end of the month. But now, my friends, let's dive into this conversation about hospitality. Welcome to the Love Your People Well podcast. We're here to build healthy, happy, and holy family relationships. I'm Jess, a marriage and family therapist, a Christian, a wife, a mom, and I believe God creates us for relationships, relationship with Him and with each other. So if you want to build a strong marriage, connect with your kids, find peace and purpose at the end of those crazy days, and keep Jesus at the center of it all, you're in the right place. Stick around, friend, and let's get started. As we jump into our conversation today about making space in our life for hospitality, um, let me open with our usual disclaimer, and then let's dive into the question of why. (laughs) But I do always like to start with uh, my usual disclaimer because I am a therapist. I'm licensed in the state of South Carolina, but this podcast is not therapy. None of the resources at Love Your People Well are, uh, you know, should be taken as professional or personal advice. All the resources I mentioned, if you want to use the discount code in the Etsy shop to get 25% off this month, the code is summer break, all one word. Um, you know, none of that is is professional. None of that is a personal relationship. Um, so I always like to remind us of that because I believe it's very important <laughs> that we're real with each other, that we're all on the same page. Um, and that that idea, that theme will come up as we talk about hospitality. So let's turn the corner and ask the question, why? Why would I say it is important and, uh, and I would even say biblically required that we make room in our lives to find the time, the energy, the resources to invest in hospitality. We're going to look at a few scripture verses um, specifically to answer the question why before we jump into some practical ideas about how to do it. But our very first point when we think about why should I do this is that God wants us to. God wants you to be hospitable. 
We can see this uh, very bluntly and succinctly in Romans chapter 12, verse 13, which says, share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. We can see it in 1 Peter 4, 9. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. It goes on then in verse 10. Each of you should use whatever gifts you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. God is very clear that he wants us to offer hospitality, to share our lives, our resources, our time with other people outside of our home, outside of our family, uh, beyond ourselves. And we can't ignore that reality, no matter how busy life is. Um, God does not have a little asterisk here, offer hospitality, you know, unless your kids are in a billion different sports and you just don't have time for it. He wants us all the time in every crazy season of life to be hospitable. But another reason that we need to acknowledge is that hospitality and connecting with other people refreshes us. It encourages us personally. We all need friends. We all feel better about ourselves and our lives if we know that we are helping other people, we're contributing to our community. And we see this again and again in the New Testament, particularly in the letters, Paul and others, pretty much every letter that they write, they're concluding it with a thank you to the people who have been friends with them, who have served alongside them, who have been hospitable with them. And we see this in our own lives. We are refreshed as we spend time with others. Probably uh, the most famous verse around this idea comes from Hebrews 10, which tells us very specifically, let us consider, so we have to be intentional about it. We don't just stumble across it. Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. And that day they're talking about is the end times when Jesus returns. So it's not that as life goes on, it'll suddenly get easier to spend time with friends, that our relationships will suddenly, you know, just kind of fall into place. And it's not a reality that we can wait until we're a little bit calmer. We've kind of managed things in our household to invest in our friendships. We need to continually meet together, encourage one another, spur one another on. We need to invest in friendships. There are a few more reasons of why this is important. Before we jump into the how, let's take a look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, which tells us, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. And the therefore that Paul is writing about here to the Thessalonians, therefore encourage one another and build one another up. He has just been talking about how dark the world will be, about the end times that are coming, about how Christians need to always be ready to be the light, even in the darkest, most difficult of times. So even as he's talking about all of that, the world is falling apart. We are coming to the end. We know we live in a broken world. Because of that, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up. It is a reality that hospitality helps us stand firm. It helps us help others to stand firm. So the church as a whole is stronger, um, is better representing Christ in the darkness of the world around us. But it also helps us individually. It helps your kids. It helps your family grow spiritually and stand firm When we acknowledge the stress and the craziness and the brokenness around us, and in the middle of that, we encourage one another and build one another up. We also need to acknowledge when we think about why it is that hospitality is worth our time and our effort is because God has given us gifts and talents and blessings, not just so that we will enjoy them, That is part of it. He loves to give us good gifts, but he's giving them to us for the common good. That's how they talk about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. He gives each of us gifts and talents, community blessings, so that we can help one another. And the verse I'm looking at here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 tells us, it's talking about spiritual gifts. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit 
distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. To each one, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is given for the common good. Now, you may or may not feel very confident about what your particular spiritual gifts are, what your particular strengths and talents are, but we can trust God has given you strengths and talents and gifts, not just to bless yourself and your little family inside the walls of your home, but for the common good of the church. When we look at Acts chapter 2, we see that the early church devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. They are coming together very intentionally, not just because it makes them feel good, and not just because God tells them to do it, but because they are encouraging one another. They are growing together. They are experiencing the common good of fellowship and teaching and sharing life together. So you may already be totally on board with like, yes, Jessica, I want deeper friendships. I want to open my home to hospitality. I want to do these things. Um, You may not need this little reminder of why these things are important, but we can't jump into the how until we are well grounded in the why. Because when life gets busy and life gets stressful, the how is going to go out the window if we don't have a clear foundation for why we're doing it. So we do need to reflect on and acknowledge these realities that God wants us to be hospitable, that this type of hospitality, investing in friendships and relationships, refreshes us and encourages us. It helps us stand firm individually, but also as a community, stand firm in the faith, grow spiritually, and it helps us use what God has given us for the common good so that we can bond together, grow together, and live our lives in the way that God wants us to. And with all of that in mind, let's take a look at the how, the question of how, the very valid question of how the heck in our busy lives with everything that's going on at home, how do we find the time? How do we find the energy? How do we find the resources, the money, the things that it will take for hospitality to become a regular part of our lives. Well, the first how step, the first action step that I would encourage you to think about is how can you invite other people to simply share life with you without adding a new thing into your calendar, into your schedule? You're already doing a lot of activities where you could potentially invite other people to join you. If you're going grocery shopping, I guarantee you, every single friend you have, every single person you meet with at church, every person on your block, everyone has to go grocery shopping. You could call them up and say, hey, do you want to come with me? Maybe you're going to the big box store, the Sam's Club or the Costco or whatever it is, and it's a little bit further away. Hey, do you want to ride with me? We could buy the world's biggest package of toilet paper and split it. I mean, you could come up with reasons to invite them or just invite them. Are you about to go sit for two hours while your child is at a sports practice. (laughs) Sure, you could take a book. This might be a good time for some self-care or getting something done. But also, you can invite a friend to come along with you. That new person that you met at church, you could shoot them a text and say, hey, uh, are you interested in sitting outside in the 90 degree heat and we can chat and get to know each other? (laughs) Now, are people always going to say yes? Of course not. But I think we often forget that we can just share life with other people without having to add in a new activity or a new thing that's going to take more time, going to take more energy. We can just invite people to come along with us. And this is a great way um, for your kids as well to get them involved in hospitality and deepen some friendships. If they have something going on, think about, should we invite someone? Uh, Maybe it's a friend, maybe it's someone we just met, maybe it's the kid that we know they seem kind of lonely at school. Invite people to share life with you. Now, similarly, but a little bit different, (laughs) when you sign up for maybe extra things, like you are adding something into your calendar, you're going to volunteer at an event, um, you're going to coordinate the bake sale at school or participate in vacation Bible school at your church, something that's a little bit 
out of the ordinary for you, that is a great time to ask other people to join you. And to be specific about choosing people who the Lord has maybe been pressing on you that you could pour into this person in a particularly special way. Yes, you could invite friends. That's a great idea. You could also keep that special eye out for new people at church, um, the new family who moved into your neighborhood, someone you know who maybe is in a difficult season of life. They need a little extra encouragement. Uh, Maybe they need to be kept busy because they're grieving or they're struggling. Uh, And maybe the Lord just puts someone on your mind. But when you have signed up for this extra thing, that's a great opportunity to invite someone else to come with you for this extra thing. It's time limited. Um, There's a reason you're doing it. And so you can share that with them. Hey, I'm really excited because fill in the blank. And I would love for you to join me. Everybody loves to be invited. They might not say yes, but no one's going to feel offended (laughs) that you thought of them and wanted to spend time with them. That will never happen. I mean, I guess the only way it would happen is if if you're really rude about it, like the way you present it <laughs> might influence that. If you're saying, oh, I really don't want to do this thing, uh, but, you know, maybe you want to do it with me. Like, okay, they might be a little bit offended. Like, why are you inviting me to do this thing you don't even want to do? So, yes, I, I, I take it back. There might be ways we could approach this <laughs> that might turn people off. Why did I get off on this tangent? I don't know. Let's circle back. The reality is everyone likes to be included. Everyone likes to be invited. Everyone likes to know someone was thinking of me when I wasn't around. That makes people feel good, feel heard, feel encouraged, feel important. And simply by reaching out to invite them, you can do that. You can make them feel heard. You can make them feel important. You can encourage them with that simple little invitation. Now, number three, when we think about our how for our action steps, Uh, If we particularly think about inviting people in, inviting them to your home or, you know, even just I'll give you a ride somewhere, like you're inviting them into your space, lower your expectations of what your environment, your space needs to look like. Lower your expectations of what you have to offer them. Hospitality and friendship, this is not about impressing people. It is simply about sharing life with people, encouraging people and being present with people, building relationship with people. I guarantee you, no one has ever come to my house and gotten a gourmet meal. (laughs) No one has ever come to my house and thought, wow, she really has a clean streak. She's an organizing fool. Uh, No, that has not happened. Now, hopefully they have not tripped over toys or found dust bunnies in their plate of spaghetti. (laughs) I don't think that has happened. But the reality is, if we wait until our home is crisp and clean and perfect. And we wait until we have the money and the time to make this amazing meal. We might never invite people over. So lower your expectations. People are not expecting you to entertain them and give them this high, high class experience. (laughs) They're just expecting you to maybe give them a little food, to smile with them, to ask them questions, to have conversation. But alongside that, when we think about inviting people in, particularly into our home, another action step here is to invite people over at off times when they might not expect a meal, they won't expect an event. Um, So like, for example, if you invite someone over, hey, you want to come hang out at six o'clock on Saturday, they're probably going to assume there will be food involved. I know that I would assume (laughs) there would be food involved. Now, I also would probably ask just to check, because if there's not food and I'm expecting food, ooh, now I might get cranky. (laughs) But you can't assume, of course, that they would ask. So there are some natural cultural expectations. But if you invite them, hey, you know, we put the kids to bed bed around seven o'clock. Do you guys want to come over at like eight or eight thirty on Saturday and we can hang out? They're probably not expecting a big dinner at eight thirty at night. Now, culturally, you might live in a place where they do actually expect that, but invite them over for dessert or invite them over for a middle of the day afternoon to sit outside on the porch. Now, you could be specific about this. Hey, do you want to come over and have a bowl of ice cream and we can chat? Do you want to come over and sit on the porch and we can watch the kids play? Or you can just be strategic about the timing that you're offering where it's a little more clear that 
you aren't going to be putting a ton of time and energy and money into a meal or some sort of event. You're simply asking them to come over and hang out and have a conversation. Now, action step number five, when we think about how to find the space in our life for hospitality, this is kind of a reality check step for all of us. Make sure you're not stretching yourself too thin. If you are an introvert and maybe being around people, just it's fun, you enjoy it, but it like exhausts you after a little while, then don't overfill your time. Don't invite people to do everything with you. You need time to be alone, to recharge. That's how God has made you. You don't want to only have time alone, but you need to be realistic about how often you are inviting people in. In a similar way, if your days are filled to the brim with activities, maybe you have a large family, so all the kids are involved in different things. Uh, Maybe it's just a season of life where... (laughs) There, the schedule is just really, really full, then you might need that time with friends or with other people to be really low key. Like, I don't want to leave the house. I don't want to make a meal, but I do want to hang out with you. So again, you can, you know, do you want to come over and drink a cup of tea or whatever your self-care thing is? You can invite that friend to join you for it. Um, you know, let's soak our feet in the little kiddie pool out back or whatever it might be. And it's okay when we think about being protective, really, of ourselves, of our family, of our our time and our energy, it's okay to simply, you know, maybe look at the calendar for the month and pick one day. We're going to be intentional about hospitality on this day because nothing is already on the schedule. And if we try to do more than that, it's going to be really emotionally draining, especially if this is new for you and your family to intentionally reach out to people or invite people in you know, start with one day a month, one activity a month. Um, I know a lot of people where their main hospitality happens only on Sundays. We go to church, we find a family and we say, hey, you want to come over for lunch? Or hey, let's go out for lunch. We invite them to do something. We're already going to go to lunch. So we just include somebody that we met. This can be big, this can be little, but you do want to be realistic so that you are not getting stretched too thin, so that your kids are not getting stretched too thin. You know, you do not want to be taking away time from your marriage or from one-on-one time with your kids or from family time to give that to other people. So it is a balance and that's going to look different for all of us. Um, For myself and my family at this season of life, it's me and my husband and we're eight months pregnant (laughs) and we have triplet toddlers. We are We're pretty busy, but not with like activities, but we're busy as in like by seven o'clock at night, we could probably go to bed. (laughs) The days are just kind of exhausting. And so in this season of life, yes, I would love to sign up for like all the different mommy and me things that are going on, story time at the library, like all the different stuff. But I'm purposefully limiting that to twice a week because more than that is just exhausting. (laughs) And really right now it's more like once a week. And when we do invite people over, we're intentional about either we're inviting you over to basically hang out with us and our kids in the super messy playroom or outside on the lawn, or we're inviting you over after they've gone to bed or during nap time, knowing this is not a big activity. We're just going to sit. We're just going to talk. We do usually have food, but that's because we really like food. So we're intentional in this season of life because it's exhausting and we don't want to overdo it and we don't want to take away time and energy from our family. um, We've had to scale back really with how often we're getting together with people and how we are getting together with people, but we still are trying to be intentional to make sure that those things happen. Okay, number six, tip number six for how to make space for all of this is um, is to focus more when you are with another person. This is not so much how to get them into your house or <laughs> going to the grocery store with you. But, uh, but for some of us, the hesitation is less about, well, how do I make room for them to come? And more about, I feel awkward when they're there. Like I feel awkward with a new person. I don't consider myself very socially um, equipped. <laughs> you know, maybe I feel like I'm just kind of socially awkward. Uh, That's hard for a lot of us is to start new relationships or start a new conversation. And so tip number six is to 
focus more on the conversation, the interactions, the questions you are asking. Focus more on what you are offering rather than the event, the thing that you're doing, or your answers to whatever questions they might ask. Frankly, people like to talk about themselves. That is just a reality of life. We like to hear our own name. We like to answer questions. We like to talk about, you know, our favorite food or the funny things our kids are doing or, you know, these fun parts of life. And so if you're feeling a little awkward with like, what are we going to talk about? (laughs) How are we going to have this interaction, this conversation? Just focus on giving them a space to shine. And that's going to make them feel good. It's probably going to make you feel good because you're making them feel good. It's going to help you get to know them. And then at that point, you have a lot more information that you can work with. Um, So yes, it will be helpful after the conversation to try to remember some details of what they shared with you. And you can follow up with a phone call or a text, you know, hey, how did that thing go? Hey, I was praying for you today when I know you had that big doctor's appointment or whatever it is. Um, If they do share something that they're struggling with, you can pause and pray right then and there. Like, oh my gosh, that sounds really hard. Uh, Let's just pause for a minute so I can pray for that because that sounds really overwhelming. Again, people are are not going to be offended or feel like, wow, this was awkward (laughs) when they're talking about themselves. You're asking questions, you're showing interest. And if you really, really, really are feeling awkward (laughs) about inviting someone or like initiating this type of interaction or conversation, uh, then tip number seven is for you. Prepare a list of questions. Prepare in advance. What am I going to ask this person to do or like invite them to do? Uh, What questions do I want to ask them to uh, about themselves, about their family? (laughs) Uh, You know, what do I want to say? You can prepare that in advance. You might even not know who you're going to have the conversation with. If your goal is we're going to go to church and invite a new family, someone we meet to come out to lunch with us, you may not know who that family is when you leave for church in the morning, but you can prepare for what are we going to say? What restaurant are we going to invite them to? A lot of people do feel awkward initiating a new conversation or trying to build a new friendship. So whether this is your first conversation with them, or maybe it's an acquaintance where you really feel like, wow, we could go deeper. We could become better friends. Well, think in advance. What do I already know about this person? You probably know something you have in common or else you wouldn't be thinking this might be a really great friendship opportunity. So think about those things. Prepare in advance. How about we... Uh, do this activity together because I know you like it, which means you're going to have fun and I'm going to feel more comfortable if you're having fun. (laughs) Now, I don't mean you have to explain all of this to them, but take that time, especially if you're feeling awkward, if you're, you know, wanting to go deeper with someone and you're not sure how to do that, take some time to prepare in advance some questions or conversation starters um, and take time to pray, to ask the Lord to make everything feel comfortable and to uh, make it a fun and encouraging time together. Number eight, uh, it might be helpful to focus on inviting people as far as hospitality is concerned, getting together with people, inviting people to something outside of your home rather than into your home. You know, inviting people to go out to dinner versus having them over for dinner, inviting people to go to a sporting event with you versus you know, come over and sit in the backyard and watch my kids throw a ball around. Uh, Maybe helping a friend plan a get together at her house. You don't have to worry about cooking or cleaning or maybe even the invitations, but you can help her clean her house or think about the menu or whatever it is. There's always events going on. There's always things we can do outside of the home. And for some of us, that feels a lot more comfortable. Um, And, you know, and even in the time you know, of COVID and post COVID, you might feel more comfortable doing outdoor events rather than indoor events. Uh, If you're, if you're worried about, you know, stranger danger or inviting strangers into your home, do some things outside of the home so that once they're not strangers, you could invite them into your home. Uh, Don't think that hospitality is limited to who is sitting around my kitchen table, who is sitting on my living room couch. It can be so much more because really it's just about connecting with people and encouraging people. And then number eight, I'm sorry, that was number eight. Number nine, tip number nine, connect people with other people. (laughs) Like, yes, you and your family 
should be invested in hospitality and friendships and connecting with people, but you don't need to be the sole focus of hospitality. So what this might look like is if you are talking with someone, a friend or someone new, and you know, they're talking about maybe they really need a new job or um, their car broke down and they need a ride to work or whatever the situation might be. If you know, wow, this person has a need and you can think in your head, oh, so-and-so is hiring at their job. Um, oh, so-and-so, you know, lives right near you and they have a car and they work near you too. Like maybe they could pick you up and take you to work. Connect those people. <laughs> uh, even if you could meet the need yourself, you're like thinking, well, I could pick you up and drive you to work. It doesn't always have to be you. It does not always have to be you and your family inviting people in, helping people, sharing with people. If you can connect them with others, that goes a long way toward building up the community at large, investing in the common good of your church or your neighborhood or your workplace or wherever it is. Connecting people is a great way to build hospitality and relationships. And this is even as simple as if, you know, if you have two friends or people you've met or you're thinking, wow, they would really get along. Well, invite them to an event together. <laughs> Try to invest in connecting them as friends, not because you want to take away from your own friendships, um, but because it would be a blessing to each of them. So connect people with other people. And then finally, the uh, last tip as far as a how, you know, practicality step here for creating and making time and space and money and resources for hospitality. My last tip here is to focus on relationships in order of priority. So if you are sacrificing time with God to go hang out with a friend, you know, that might be fine once in a while, depending on what thing, what's going on. But overall, over the long term, that's not healthy. A relationship with the Lord is a higher priority than grabbing coffee with your friend. Um, a relationship with your husband is a higher priority than opening your home to have a potluck and invite people over. We need to be intentional about what priority order our relationships go in. This will help you um, not only to protect those relationships, but it will also help you to stay sane and to feel a little more in control, a little more um, purposeful about what these different time commitments are looking like, what your relationships, relationship commitments are looking like. Um, one of the biggest ways that I have seen this be a struggle is when people are in ministry or they're very heavily involved in their church or, or a volunteer organization, and they're constantly having people over, constantly putting the church first. It's possible your kids are going to start to feel overshadowed. They never get family dinners because you're always inviting people over or they have trouble getting some alone time with you to talk about what they're struggling with because you're always on the phone checking in with a friend or at an event, <laughs> helping people, praying with other people, sharing the gospel with other people. That's important, but only after we have invested in and loved on and cared for our kids, our family, the people who God has put in that closer, more intimate relationship. So really a, a helpful way to do this really is to make your whole family feel included and important in what hospitality looks like. You know, it's not just you and your husband inviting another couple over for dinner, but invite the whole family <laughs> or, you know, like we talked about before, your kids can invite other friends to come along with different, you know, sporting events or whatever might be going on. Um, you do want to make this a larger investment for your family. It's not just you and your individual friendships, but you need to make sure the priority people are remaining the priority people, that they know they are the priority people. Not because you're neglecting other people, but because you're telling them they're the priority, you're showing them with how you're scheduling and mapping out your time, you are checking in with them and having conversations with them, you're you know, maybe physically affectionate with them, you're treating them in ways you're not treating your friends or other people that you're inviting over. So my friends, I hope that these ideas are practical and realistic. 
Um, and you know, certainly you do not need to go out and feel any sort of pressure of like, oh, I have 10 new things to do during this summer. No, pick one thing, one area where you feel like maybe the Lord is convicting you of this, or you did meet a new person at church, or you're really desiring a deeper friendship. Pick the area that makes the most sense for you and your family. Stay grounded in the why of why you are making space in your very busy schedule and taking some of your limited energy to invest in that relationship. Um, Stay grounded in the why and then just try one thing that might stretch you out of your comfort zone or be a little bit different for you to connect with that person, to invite them in. So let me recap real quick um, these 10 action steps for how to find the time, the energy, the resources for hospitality and friendship. Number one, invite other people to share life with you. The stuff you're already doing, invite them to come along. Number two, when you sign up for something extra, volunteering or some sort of event, be intentional to ask someone to join with you. Number three, lower what you are expecting you have to offer in your the cleanliness of your home or the quality of the meal or whatever. Lower your expectations of what you're offering. Number four, invite people over uh, for either a specific activity or at an off time when they're not going to be expecting a big meal or an event or something like that. Number five, make sure you are not stretching yourself too thin. Do not overfill your schedule with hospitality related things simply because you want to or you feel like you should. Number six, focus more on the conversations, asking questions, getting to know the person rather than the actual event that you're doing, the activity that you're doing. Number seven, uh, feel free to be prepared in advance by yourself (laughs) with questions or conversation starters to take some of that pressure off of a new conversation or a new friendship. Number eight, um, focus on inviting people to events outside of your home, different activities or things that are going on rather than into your personal home. Number nine, connect people with other people so that you are not the center of all the hospitality, all the friendships, all the relationships. And number 10, keep the priority on the priority. (laughs) Keep your focus, first of all, on your priority relationships with the Lord, making sure you are feeling healthy and okay, your relationship with your husband, relationship with your kids. Don't, Don't get off balance with how you are prioritizing your time your energy, or your resources. And friends, that is all we have for today. So you can, you know, if some of this hit home for you and you're thinking, what was that scripture verse? (laughs) Or uh, maybe you want to share this with a friend because you know it would encourage them. You can always find um, kind of the blog style show notes for the episode online at loveyourpeoplewell.com forward slash zero eight four, because that's today's episode 84. (laughs) Those show notes are always online. Uh, Our free resources are always online. You're going to find a lot of great stuff at loveyourpeoplewell.com. And then, of course, our Etsy discount during the month of June only, 25% off using the code SUMMERBREAK. So connect with whatever resources will be helpful for you. And make sure that you're subscribed to the podcast because on Friday, we will be back for our Friday Faith Follow-Up. But until then, hugs and blessings to you. I'll talk to you soon.